I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to Tailgate Tales, a special series of the Southern Spirits podcast. Each week, we are talking about a Southeastern Conference school and something creepy going on there. So what are we going to talk about this week, Leah? Well, tonight we're going to Knoxville, Tennessee, to the University of Tennessee. Oh, that's fun. Well, this year so far, Tennessee is 2-1 and one on the season. This weekend, uh, September 22nd, they are playing Florida at home, so they'll be in Knoxville at 6 o'clock. Uh, let's go ahead and meet the mascot, Leah. What do you say? Uh, so, I know that Tennessee's the Vols. Volunteers. Yeah, that's all yeah. I've got. Yes, they're the Volunteers. Their named mascot is Smokey, and it originated in 1953. So, let's talk about how that mascot came to be. Old Smokey? Yeah. Well, kind of. Pet him. Pretty much. Let's talk about it. Okay. This is from that Saturday Down South article once again. The Volunteers, named for the state's moniker, the Volunteer State, have had a live coonhound as a mascot since a poll in 1953 selected the dog to rep- represent the school. The breed was chosen because it is native to Tennessee, and a local reverend's blue tick coonhound won a competition held by the school's pep club for the first live mascot. The original dog, named Blue Smokey, howled loudly when introduced at the selection competition, earning him the win. UT also has male and female costume versions of Smokey. But, uh, well, that's it. That's it for the quote. But uh, the one everyone cares about is the live one. And it's real cute every oh, time. I pet the dog so bad. Mm-hmm. Wait till we get to Georgia. Oh, Ugga. <laughs> I know about Ugga. He's yeah. adorable. Well, that's it for the I'm mascot section. I'm a sucker for dog mascots. Yeah, you are. Oh. <laughs> well, that's it for uh, Smokey oh, I just talking about the mascot. Mm. No, you can't pet him. I'm not going to let you pet him. Why not? Who owns the Smokey now? Does it is it owned by like the school itself? Or? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I imagine that it is a Tennessee. Most of them, most of the schools that have live mascots own them, I believe. So. But do they have people that love them and and cuddle them and yes, call them they're their very good dogs they're very well boys? nurtured and cared for dogs Ugh, but or he animals wear for orange, that matter. Doesn't he? Yeah, it's my only complaint with Tennessee. I don't look good in orange. Hmm. Well, it's not you're not the coon dog. <laughs> <laughs> you're not Smoky. I'm not, but I could be. I mean, if you want to, we can petition. <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, are you ready for a story from the University of Tennessee? I think I am. I hope everybody else out there is. All right. Well, I'm going to do the obvious one because you're waiting for it. I know you are. So Who? let's talk about everybody out there in podcast land, mm. the the metaphorical collective you. Okay. Um, you're waiting on the body farm, and I'm about to deliver. Yay, deliver me the body farm. Body farm. Hashtag body farm. All right, y'all. If you don't know what a body farm is, um, the body farm is just a research facility for forensic anthropologists, and it's where they go put corpses out to decompose in a bunch of different situations, and they observe that, and that can help people in uh crime situations decide what has happened to a corpse you know um was it left Mm -hmm. in the shade was it left in the water uh what kind of bugs are eating it that kind of thing um and it's been a very useful tool uh for law enforcement uh medical people etc to really understand how the body decomposes because it's really not been studied prior to this body farm being built um so this is the story of the body farm how it came to be there and uh, a little bit more about the university itself so are you ready yes i do need to put something in here because i forgot and i'm sorry okay still drinking monkey knot india pale ale I have to put that in because I love this beer, and I will give Straight to Ale a shout out whenever I can because right. this is a fantastic India Pale Ale. So hey, try y'all some ale. Monkey Knot. Sponsor us. Yeah, Straight <laughs> to Ale. You can send us anything if you want. I'm, I'm totally. We kidding. can come pick it up. Seriously. Fuck that. We're 30 minutes down the road. Anyway, all right. So <laughs> the guy that started the whole body farm thing is named Bill Bass, and he actually just had a birthday last month and i believe he turned 90 years old is that what i remember i think it was 90 i don't know yeah uh he was 90 years old so happy birthday uh mr bass happy uh, he birthday turned 90 billy on august the 30th so kudos to you sir um for being <laughs> old um anyway <laughs> um <laughs> if only so 
he became the prof- a professor of anthropology he was the i think he was the head of the anthropology department i'm not sure but anyway in 1971 he joined the faculty at the university of tennessee and he had previously been teaching at the university of kansas in the 60s and he had gotten asked a few questions about you know is there a way that uh you can tell how long a cow had been dead for a while i guess kansas has cows i don't know but like you know that had that question Mm -hmm. had come up and he had thought about it and thought about it and and really the answer was no no one had ever sort of studied decomposing corpses before like in depth and and actually written down you know what happens in a natural decomposition position process um so he he was interested um but it never really got past just the thinking about it stage well he moved to tennessee to knoxville and joined the faculty there at university of tennessee now there's a weird story involved of how he decided to actually make the body farm um which is very interesting so the battle of nashville right in the civil war happened Mm -hmm. in 1864 and there was an important dude lieutenant colonel william shy who was killed at the battle of nashville and apparently he's really famous and i've never heard of him yeah i don't know him either i'm sorry i guess he had to be a tennessean probably maybe i i just didn't get that far in civil war history i'm sorry um Mm -hmm. But he was buried on in his family cemetery near an old mansion in Franklin, Tennessee. Um, and that mansion, of course, belonged to the Shaw family. Um, now, someone had recently purchased this mansion, and they noticed that uh, Lieutenant Colonel Shaw's grave had been disturbed. So they were like, that's weird. And they called the police. So the police got there and started removing the top part of the grave i'm not sure i've never seen a picture of it so i don't know exactly what it was but i assume there was like a stone covering of something yeah and they made a terrifying discovery um it was a headless corpse oh jesus dressed in a tuxedo and it was sitting on top of the coffin that was supposed to be holding uh lieutenant colonel shy well they of course thought it was a recent murder victim someone was just sort of trying to hide their murder victim on top of a grave Mm -hmm. so that no one would disturb it you know and so they called in bass because he was actually tennessee's very first forensic anthropologist and he brought the body back to the anthropology offices and fun story they are actually located in the football stadium there in nyland stadium that is a legit it's not just a. I i always a, thought it was a urban legend it's type of not thing. an urban legend mm-hmm. now it's not underneath the football field itself or anything it's in one of the halls to the side in what used to be athletic dormitories mm-hmm. um they built new dorms and there's actually a bunch of different uh classes and departments that are held in a wing of the stadium but okay. yes the anthropology department is in a wing of i think it's nyland is that how you say that nyland i believe yeah nyland, 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 nyland? i'm sorry oh, okay nyland stadium yeah um it's in one of the wings of the nyland stadium and so yeah there are totes uh bones and dead bodies and shit there so bonus fact <laughs> well um, if we were naming these reason. if they, if we were naming these i would 100 percent name this episode totes and bones and dead bodies and shit oh my <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they started studying this body and based on how pink the flesh was, how intact and not decomposed the corpse was, Bass determined that that individual had been dead no longer than a year. Well, this news got out. There was a big hoopla. It was national news. You know, they found this corpse, that kind of thing. Turns out it was a mistake. Um, and <laughs> the body turned out to be Lieutenant Colonel Shy himself. Um, and someone had removed him from his iron coffin and left his skull inside the coffin. And he had studied Why? Civil War era cemeteries before. He had never seen a body that well preserved. But I mean, in the in the era of the civil war people were 
like embalming was a sort of new thing that was getting like really and and every mm -hmm. weird ass doctor wanted to pump your body full of something to make it an everlasting corpse you mm -hmm. know what i mean and there's all sorts of weird shit and so i mean it was just a legitimate like oops you know like yeah. it's it, it was a mistake um and it sort of weighed <laughs> on him and he was like you know this is embarrassing but we need to learn from this and so he approached the chancellor of the university of tennessee uh who was jack reese at the time and he was like look can we have like a couple of acres of land out behind the university i want to set up this research facility this is what we're going to do this is what we think we're going to learn from it and he was really worried that they were going to say uh that's creepy fuck no <laughs> um but it turns out the chancellor was like yeah that makes sense. That's a good idea. Sure. Mm -hmm. Fine. Be a lot of publicity for the university. Yeah. It's a really so good idea. So they went ahead and gave him a couple of acres of land um, near the university of uh, the university hospital. You can look it up on a map, but it is not open to the public and they do not give tours. So do not go there and harass <laughs> those people. Okay. Do you have to be an enrolled student you or in some kind of program? You have to be in their program mm -hmm. to do that, or you have to be in like a student of one of the things like they have conferences of stuff of like police officers and other forensic things that come through you know mm -hmm. but like just random public you do not go there it's not nice i'm, I'm anyway. not gonna try <laughs> once again that was the collective you out thank in you podcast land i um, love when you call me a collective anyway but the students were responsible for all of the construction they cleared the land they put in a driveway they ran the power and water lines they they did it all it it was great and then um they got their first body that next year it was a 73 year old man whose daughter donated his body and they set him up and that was you know the very beginning of the first outdoor forensic research facility and it turns out that this has been such a good idea and something that's been so valuable that there are now seven facilities in the united states so the first one was at the university of tennessee um, then there's Western Carolina University, Texas State University, Sam Houston State University, Southern Illinois University, and Colorado Macy University. Um, and then there's also one in Australia on the outskirts of Sydney in the suburb of Yarramundi. Yarramundi? Which is just fun to say. That's in the Florida province. Yarramundi. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's actually become a really big deal. It's a very valuable research tool. And it all started at the University of Tennessee. But, you know, are you interested in giving your body to a body farm? There are three ways sure. that can happen. All right, so the first way is at the state examiner's or at the state medical examiner's office. So if a body comes in in whatever form and it's left unclaimed or unidentified, the medical examiner could choose to donate the body to a body farm. Just because that's a low-cost way to get rid of a body because mm -hmm. getting rid of bodies is actually very expensive. Yep. So that's just a natural way to let them decompose, add something to science, etc. And once they're done with the body, generally they'll cremate their remains or they'll, you know, whatever's left. It just depends. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of different things involved in that, but that's the first way. The second way is a family member could donate your body. So if you were really into science and that was a thing that they <laughs> thought that you'd be into, they can say, hey, this is my loved one's body. It's yours now. And they would go ahead and take the body and use it for research. The third way is that if you personally want to be donated, you can fill out a form um, and it'll ensure that your wishes are carried out. But that can also be overturned by family members that don't want to... Anyway, make sure you get a lawyer if that's what you want to do and, and <laughs> make sure that it's it's tight and everybody knows what you want to do. But that is another way that tight. you can um, donate your body to a body farm if that's the way you want to do it. And a lot of people are interested in it because that's a it's natural decomposition mm -hmm. that you can't really get in a lot of other places. So that I'm that interested in thing. it. Um, I'm interested in that or the um, the life pod thing. Have you seen those? Um, the one where they turn you the, into a tree. Yeah, they put you in like yeah, a it's big actually, egg. Actually, it's really bad for the tree. <laughs> I've done a lot of research. <laughs> bad into for the it. tree. 
no, it really is. Your <laughs> your body doesn't decompose in a way that makes nutrients for something that would. It, it, it well, would I don't care about the tree. tree. I just want to be in a little egg in the ground. Um, big I, egg. I don't but, know. You know. I'm more into aquamation, which isn't really a thing around here yet, but oh it's God, becoming what the fuck a is thing. That? Um, it's basically when they hydrolyze your body. They basically chemicals eat up your entire body, and your the byproduct is basically water, and they flush you out to see. It's pretty great. Oh, that's fun. Uh, and there's no waste. There's no leftover. There's no creepy box of ashes that someone has to carry around. We could just like, it's dump just... you out in the ocean and let sharks take care of it. Okay. Well, that's creepy. Also, well, I'm very buoyant, and I would float <laughs> like a motherfucker. Until to the... the sharks got you. <laughs> but I'm saying I would float like a motherfucker and end up on a Sting like a bee. somewhere. It'd be a problem. <laughs> so anyway. I made myself laugh. <laughs> Oh, God. Float like a motherfucker. Stink like a bee. You need to calm down. Oh, that's funny. It's not, though. (laughs) But there are a few reasons that they would not accept a body. So if you've got HIV, that's a no-go. If you've got hepatitis, also a no-go. And if you were diagnosed with, like, an antibiotic-resistant bacteria of some sort, like MRSA, (laughs) um, you can't do that either. It's racist. That is sort of uh, a really quick overview of the body farm and its connection to the university of tennessee well um do they accept large individuals i would assume that they would accept anybody because that's i mean Mm -hmm. victims of crimes and and random bodies that show up come up in all Mm -hmm. ages sizes genders i've honestly like for real thought about that about doing that with my remains another question do you sign up for a particular body farm or do you just say you can i donate my body to (coughs) science and you can send me to any of the body farms in the country my guess is that it's an independent thing for each facility so it would be something that you would have an agreement with a specific facility Mm -hmm. and i also think it would probably be the best idea if you lived near one of those facilities yeah because obviously Um, you don't want to be embalmed so that your remains can decompose naturally Uh, excuse me so you want to like i would want to go to the one in tennessee yeah so So. like when people donate their bodies to science or whatever you you can't just say science in general you have to have a specific location i declare bankruptcy (laughs) like that yeah so like my brother started out um he went to undergrad at uab and they have a big medical program and he thought that he was going to be a uh, biomedical engineer but it turns out that uh he had to in his first um anatomy class uh dissect a cadaver um and oh. that apparently kind of put him off doing the whole in undergrad medical, uh-huh. that was undergrad yeah like okay. freshman year undergrad um and, no thanks and so those are all bodies that were donated to the university um and so did that he is, do it like he yeah. he was you know he was in the class you said yeah Fuck like that I Ugh. think it was a few to a body, and yeah, they were they were dissecting a human cadaver for an anatomy class, and that, like that that is all. another option. So if you want to be cut apart by undergrads, um, also an option. <laughs> no, thank you. So yeah, like as far as where bodies could go to science, you know, I'm on the body farm end of the spectrum, but whatevs. I'm not going to do anything with it when I'm done with it, so it's whatevs. Doesn't yeah, I mean, me. me too. That's what I was saying. I don't, what am I going to do with my body? What are Nothing. you going to do with it is a better question. Whatever you ask or not. Don't, yeah, don't say that. <laughs> I might ask some freaky shit. Then give it to the body <laughs> far. <laughs> I'm going to pack my chest with sparklers so when I finally just... <laughs> Yours or mine? <laughs> I don't what? know. Anybody. No, I'd rather be like one of those... Um, uh, snake things like make me into a snake <laughs> where my ashes just you know <laughs> ooze like out of it like those fireworks yeah that's what I'm talking about that's gross I think it is I think you're right but anyway mm. yeah body farm y'all well we'll um, see y'all at the body farm on Saturday no you won't because once again not open to the public okay well 
I guess that's everything. Mm-hmm. So we had a fun week this week. Yeah. I hope y'all did too. Listen to the main episode tomorrow. Make sure to um, give to our newly opened Patreon. Patreon. Which is at uh, patreon.com slash southern spirits podcast. Make sure to come out October 19th and see us at Tallulah Brewing Company in Jasper, Alabama. They have great beer and you should drink some and listen Shit, to it. Shit, that announcement's in the episode Sunday. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Oh uh, yeah. Well, we're we're doing a live show October nineteenth at Tallulah Brewing Company in Jasper, Alabama. So come see us. But the actual announcements tomorrow. So sorry. Whatever. We record out of order. You know we're weird. Yeah. Well, y'all come. Y'all. Uh, y'all come. Come. That's, <laughs> That's it. Y'all come and find us on all of your social medias. Just search for Southern Spirits Podcast. We hope that uh, your team wins tonight or today, whenever they're playing. I don't know. But I guess that's it for uh, week four. So we'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all.